Hey guys, welcome back to my channel yet again. And I wanted to make a quick video and talk about some of the pet peeves I have about Linux in general. I did do a video in the past where I debunked Linux myths and some of this is gonna be more along that line, but there are some things in the Linux community or even with Linux itself that, you know, drive me a little crazy. So I thought it would be fun to let you guys know what are some things that annoy me or bother me. I don't want to make this a total negative video or shed bad light on Linux, but you know, I do have to be honest and you know, I, I love to praise Linux. I love it. But when there's some things that fail or don't work, you know, quite right, I do want to let you guys know. And some of this is just not even about Linux itself, it's just about the community or the mindset surrounding it. So I figured it'd be fun to do this. So let's go ahead and dive into some of my pet peeves about Linux. Now the first pet peeve I have is I think the same problem a lot of Linux users with you know multiple years of experience will also share. And that is those that use DistroWatch as a ranking of which distributions are good or worth using, or basically just think that there's any relevance to DistroWatch at all when it comes to determining what the top distributions are. Now, to be fair, DistroWatch will have some correlation to reality. It's not completely bogus, but it's all about hits per day on that site. It doesn't give you a general opinion about which distributions have the biggest market share. As many people would have you believe in what some beginners might actually think. Now that being said, if you see a distribution near the top, it probably is a popular distribution. You're not going to see a distribution on the top that isn't popular unless there's some kind of um, counterfeit clicking going on or something like that, which I think has happened at least once. But it's it's not going to be a exact correlation to uh, which distributions are the most popular. Last time I looked at it, MX Linux is number one, or at least it was number one. And I think it probably still is. I haven't looked at it today. MX Linux is a fantastic distribution and I highly recommend it, but it's not going to be the most used. Ubuntu itself is going to be more used. Linux is, you know, Linux Mint is going to be more used than that. So I think that's what you're going to find if you look at actual data, especially you know, what you see out in the field, because if MX Linux is the number one Linux distribution, um, why is it the case that I don't see MX Linux everywhere I see Linux? I haven't run into a single person in person that's using MX Linux. And yes, MX Linux is popular. It's a good distribution. Is it number one? Absolutely not. So DistroWatch is not a, an exact correlation to popularity or market share. So um, that is one pet peeve that I have is um, the, in the in, overall in the community, people give DistroWatch more merit than it actually deserves. I use DistroWatch a lot, but the reason why I use it is only to just get notified when a new distribution is out. That's really all I care about. Um, I don't really need to um, know which di distribution is the most popular, but I do want to know when something is released because it might allow me a notification or something to know that I should cover it on my channel. And that's what I use it for. Now, another pet peeve of mine is when people get mad at Linux because it doesn't work on their hardware, or they say, you know, Linux is crap, it doesn't work on my machine, doesn't work on my laptop, Windows works great, so uh, Linux doesn't work, so Linux is just not good. Now, I, I touched on this on, you know, one of my other videos, the one I mentioned where I debunked some Linux myths, and, you know, it is a pet peeve as well, so I'm going to talk about it here. You know, there is no guarantee that any piece of software is going to work on any hardware. That is the most important thing to know about computers. There is no possible way that 100% of any software is, or even operating systems or a particular operating system are going to work on any particular computer. There are tens of thousands, probably even even hundreds of thousands of possible combinations of hardware. And I think I'm underselling it by just guesstimating those numbers. There's no way that any operating system or even the Linux kernel itself is going to support every possible combination that you might have. So I think that's a mistake a lot of beginners will make. I mean, I love to evangelize Linux and tell you guys how awesome it is. I'm never going to make the claim, try this Linux distro. It works on every laptop. Laptop. No, it, it doesn't and it, it won't. You're, you're going to have an edge case and I think that it's important for users to do research on their hardware. Either buy a Linux compatible 
laptop. I have two right here um, that are compatible with Linux. It's made by System76. Both of these machines are. And you know what? It's going to work. Even And then, you know, I'm not going to have a problem. But even some of System76 machines are custom tailored to Pop! OS, their distribution. So you still might run into an edge case. Bottom line, do your research. Look at what laptop you want to purchase and just ensure that it's actually compatible with the distribution that you want to run. Check the hardware before you install it. But it's just a pet peeve of mine when someone just, um, you know, makes fun of Linux or just, um, you know, rage quits, so to speak, just because it doesn't work on their hardware. It's computers we're talking about here. Nothing is 100%, and just expect 100%. Um, you shouldn't do that. And another pet peeve of mine is when people evangelize Linux to the point where they tell you it's going to work on every computer. Don't tell people that. Please don't. I don't care how much you love Linux. I love Linux more than most people. I have a whole YouTube channel dedicated about it. I write books on it. I run Linux on everything, and I won't even tell you that it works on 100% of all computers. So please don't tell people that. Let people know that it's a viable alternative and to look into it. That's definitely a valid thing to do, but don't tell people it'll work on their computer unless you've already gone through the trouble of researching their hardware and its compatibility before you give that recommendation. Now, another pet peeve of mine in the Linux community, there's multiple facets to it, but generally what it all boils down to is when people in the community dismiss something without researching. And that could be, for example, a software project takes a direction that um, you know might seem kind of um, strange, but maybe people will think it's a really stupid idea, and they will basically just um, you know flame the developers and just tell them you're making a mistake. This is horrible before they actually give it a shot. Or um, even worse is when a new technology comes out and it's insulted by what you know elitists in the Linux community. I mean, you could consider me like an elitist almost. I mean, I've been using Linux for a very long time, but I'm not ever going to discount a new feature or a new piece of software without at least having tried it first. Now, where I see this most often is with the concept of universal applications or universal packages. There's no official name. I call it universal packages, and that means, you know, you like your app images, um, snap packages, flat packs. Basically, you have one package that includes all of its dependencies. You install that one thing, and then it's independent of the distribution's packaging system. And I'll see, you know, news posts where they're talking about new features for flat packs or app images or snap packages. And then you'll have people saying, you should just use apt-get. That's all you should use. These things shouldn't exist. And they'll just totally um, discount these great technologies that they really don't know anything about, or maybe they didn't research it. It's perfectly fine to hate something if you've looked into it and you don't really like it on account of, you know, having done the reading and you know about it. But it just seems like a lot of people default to hating something before they actually give it a chance. And in the Linux community, we, we could be especially passionate about um, our technology and the um, various technologies surrounding the Linux kernel. So I get it, we're passionate, but we should never discount something without actually reading up on it. Universal packages, for example, are a great thing. They are not for everybody, but they solve a legitimate need. And you also have things where, you know, a developer announces that, um, you know, they're getting rid of a feature. GNOME is especially egregious for this. And, you know, it is a problem with GNOME, to be completely honest, but people will just get so upset at the developers. But what it all comes down to is that the, to, these developers are volunteers. And they don't have unlimited time. A lot of them have a day job, and they're not paid to create GNOME, basically. They're volunteering their time, and they can't keep every feature alive. If, you know, there's not enough in the way of developers or anything in their time or the number of people, yeah, they're going to have to let some things go. It's just an unfortunate side effect, and they might have to let something go that's either extremely hard to maintain, maybe it's a feature that is used by a lot of people, and it's, they're not saying, like, nobody needs this. Sometimes they do say that, but not really all the time, and most of the time not. It's just, this has to go. It's not maintained. Maybe we don't have time to maintain it anymore. We don't have the mindset or the, you know, the time to do that. And then people will get upset. They're volunteers. We shouldn't really get upset at them for this. 
I think the correct response would be to rally developers for them, to get behind it, to fix the problem why it's been discontinued, and maybe even help develop it would be a great way to go. If you have development skills yourself, certainly volunteer your time, but to go and attack developers because they're not doing what you think they should do, or go in a direction that you think they should go into, or they discontinue something that they don't have time to support or maintain. I think that it's important to understand the Linux community and that we're volunteers and we don't have an unlimited amount of time to keep these things going. Yes, there's some very unfortunate cuts of features. And I understand not, I mean, most people don't want their favorite feature to go away. I mean, when you're going through your newsfeed and you find out a feature you use every single day is going to be cut, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to experience that. Not one person. But at the end of the day, it comes down to time. The developers either have the time to maintain those features or they don't. And um, I feel like more people should donate some time and help them out. But if, if people aren't going to do that, unfortunately, they're going to have to make some cuts. So another pet peeve I'm going to mention I have a feeling most people are going to disagree with me, and I'm totally fine with that because this is going to be an opinion that um, you know, might seem extreme, and given the Linux community, I really feel probably at least 75% of people will disagree with this, but I feel strongly about this. And one of my pet peeves is that user space applications are included with the repositories for all the other distribution packages. Now, what I mean by that is, Take apt, for example, Debian and Ubuntu use that. You have kernel packages, system libraries there, um, security updates go there for the you know, operating system or distribution packages, but then you also have things like Firefox, LibreOffice, user space applications. I don't feel that user space applications belong with the packages that the operating system or distribution use. Now, why do I feel that way? Now, before you start flaming me and, and hit that caps lock key, I'll explain. When you have user space applications on a non-rolling distribution, then that application version is locked. Now, they make some exceptions to that. They keep Firefox updated, for example, so you always have the latest Firefox. But, I mean, look at what version of LibreOffice Ubuntu 18.04 ships. I don't remember the version number off the top of my head, but it's behind. You'll never get a new version. Never. Not until you update the entire distribution to a new version. So I'll never understand for the life of me why um, these distributions think that it's okay to lock the application version to the operating system version. I mean, could you imagine telling people that run Mac that you have to run a certain version of Mac OS to use this application and you are not allowed to use a newer version of this application until next year when the new version of Mac OS comes out. Mac users would lose their minds, and rightfully so, because it just sounds stupid if you think about it. Why should we have user space applications that are locked to the distribution version? Now, I'd be more of a fan of a semi-rolling release model where you have the distribution is locked and it doesn't, it's not rolling, but then you have a separate user space repository that gives you the latest library office the latest versions of your text editors and all those applications, but keeps the kernel and system libraries separate, that would be awesome. Now, the solution to this is going back to universal packages, which I mentioned earlier. That solves the problem because it gives you the ability to install applications separate from your distribution's package manager and packages that are installed there. I think that's great. Um, I use AppImage, actually, and LibreOffice, um, KeePass, a number of other applications are there, and I manage those independently of the distribution. So I mentioned earlier that I always prefer 1804, actually LTS in general, and that's why. I can always have the latest applications, but universal packages just don't seem to be catching on like they should, and I'll never understand why. I feel like, you know, Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, they're really pushing Snap packages. They could be pushing that a lot harder, to be honest. Um, I, I think they could even mandate that all packages actually be in the form of snap packages if they're user space applications. But um, the Linux, Linux community would go ballistic if they did something like that and never let them live that down. So they're kind of forced to support it. But I know that's not going to be a popular opinion. I do feel there needs to be separation from you know, user space applications and between that and um, operating system or distribution packages that actually user space applications should be outside of the systems package manager and maintained separately 
there's a number of, of problems that we run into in the Linux community that I've seen on various distributions caused by, by that. Somebody tries to install something that conflicts with something else and the whole system comes down. Why should that even happen? Um, again, not a popular opinion, but I really feel like there needs to be a solution. I'm not sure if universal packages are definitely the solution. They're an attempt at it. I think they're a good solution. We'll kind of see how that goes as we move along. But uh, so far, um, I think that we're going in the right direction, but we're just not there yet. Now, the final pet peeve that I'll, I'll mention is probably going to be similar to the um, Myths Debunked video that I did. And that is when people make comments like, GNOME sucks, it's garbage. Maybe it's garbage to you, but it doesn't mean it's garbage for everybody. I, I've heard people you know, make fun of Unity, or you know, like I mentioned, GNOME, or other desktop environments, or they'll say Ubuntu is trash, or Fedora is horrible. They say that like it's a fact. Like, okay, if, if it's that bad, can you give me some, uh, some actual evidence that will prove that it's actually bad? as a fact, because you just stated it's a fact, it's garbage, and it's bad, so clearly you must have some documentation that will prove that it is in fact bad, horrible, garbage, trash, or whatever word you want to use. I don't really feel it's necessary to say or, or, or make comments like that, because just because you don't like the desktop environment, the distribution, the piece of software, doesn't make it crap. It just means it's not right for you, it's not a good fit for you, it's not what you're looking for, it's not what you're into. But to just um, you know make fun of things like that and just totally talk down on technologies just because it doesn't work for you or make an elitist claim that something is garbage because it doesn't do what you think it should do, I think that that's um, not a good thing that people should be doing. I think we should you know, kind of phrase our opinions differently because that can really lead to some flame wars. Maybe we could say, you know, GNOME isn't for me, not my, not my cup of tea, not, not what I like. I like KDE, or, um, you know, Ubuntu is not for me, but Fedora is great. I like that. Um, you know, I find that Fedora works better in my use cases. And give some opinions. You know, why is it that you don't like it? Um, Ubuntu is faster than Fedora, so I use that. Or Fedora is, you know, backed by Red Hat indirectly. Uh, maybe that might be a reason someone might like that more. Give some reasons, and I find that the Linux community in general would be better and they'll be less flaming because people just take this, these things so seriously that they'll insult other people, insult technologies, and I really don't like that. I think that we all just need to get along better because the reason why we have so many desktop environments, so many distributions, is because in the Linux community, we have choice. If a piece of software doesn't work for us, We'll just use something that does work for us. But regardless of what our use case is, what our style is, there's definitely going to be something that caters to us independently and uniquely. And that's what makes it great. So I think that we could do better in the Linux community expressing our opinions. So um, that being said, um, speaking of opinions, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments section below if you uh, have any opinions on anything that I mentioned, or if you have some pet peeves of your own, I mean, I have a ton, I could probably make a whole video series on this. Let me know what yours are in the comments below. I look forward to checking that out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.